We're now going to draw some absolute value graphs. In this section will start with straight line graphs. In grade 10, you'll have dealt with functions, graphs of functions of this sort. y equals a into x minus p plus q. I'm not sure if you would have dealt with it in that form, but this is the standard form for the absolute value straight line graph. It's very similar to the form for the quadratic equation, the parabola. So the quadratic function, the only difference being that there's a squared, brackets and squared. Includes a variety of functions. Let's have a look and revise the effects. There's the y equals absolute value of x, the standard absolute value graph. Gradient to 1, gradient to negative 1. Now if we go here, all that's happened is we have the factor of 2, and it can be inside or outside. You can take a factor out of an absolute value sign, as long as it's positive, and it's gone steeper. That's what that 2 does. It makes this, the gradient steeper. This one here, it's that same graph shifted down 4 units. The next one, we take that graph, because of the negative, we've inverted it, flipped it about the x-axis, and we have the x minus 2, which means x has to be greater by 2 to get the same result. So this has a paradoxical effect where it shifts to the right by 2. So negative, flip the graph, and then move it to the right by 2. This one here, we move it to the left by 1, and we shift it down 4. We have a shallow gradient in this final one here. There's y equals absolute value of x. Now, a half means that the gradient is a half. It's moved across to the left by 1 because of the x plus 1, and it's shifted up 1 because of the plus 1 at the end. That's similar to doing graphs by what we call transformations, where we go to the original graph and then we work from there. You can always fall back on the definition of absolute value in order to sketch any absolute value graph. There's the definition of the absolute value. Absolute value of k equals, and it's status quo, if k greater than or equal to zero, and sign changed if k is less than zero. So let's take an example. y equals x minus 1 and absolute value plus 2. So that means status quo with brackets, because remember that absolute value is brackets as well, plus 2. If the contents of the absolute value is greater than or equal to zero. And then we change the sign if the, the contents of the absolute value are less than zero. We separate this into two separate different graphs. Well, it is two different graphs. Y equals the green and Y equals the other, what you'd call that. I guess some sort of mauve or so. So when we take the green, when x is greater than or equal to 1, which is in fact x minus 1 greater than or equal to naught, I've just simplified that, then we simplify this y equals x minus 1 plus 2, so y equals x plus 1. To sketch a straight line graph, the simplest method is the intercept method where you substitute 0 for x and 0 for y to find the y and x intercepts respectively. For the y intercepts, substitute 0 for x and we get y equal to 1. x intercepts, substitute 0 for y and solve, we get x equal to negative 1. The second graph, for x less than 1, coming from x minus 1 less than 0, we take minus x plus 1 plus 2, which is minus x plus 3. 0 for x gives y equal to 3. 
0 for y solves to x equals 3. There, we've drawn the graph. Notice the intercept are marked in, and the graph is drawn lightly. For example, in pencil, draw the full graph for now. There is the critical value, the critical x value of 1. Because it's when x equals 1 that the change is going to occur. Because at x equals 1, that, so that absolute value is 0. Now, the greed graph, it's greater than or equal to 1. So its section to the right will be taken. And the other graph, its section to the left will be taken. So we're going to take this graph, which is a positive gradient, so it's that part of the graph, and we drop that part. And then this graph, we're going to take that part of it and drop there. And there we have our absolute value graph. This is very quick. You can do it very quickly. Another example, y equals negative the absolute value of x plus 2 minus 3. Now in the definition, remember I said absolute value of k equals status quo. Remains the same. So therefore y equals negative absolute value of x plus 2 minus 3. When x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 0, when this is positive or 0 inside there, then we have status quo with brackets. When the contents of the absolute value are negative, then the absolute value changes the sign, so there we have the sign changed. Combining the two graphs, the first graph, when x is greater than or equal to minus 2, and this simplifies to minus x minus 5. The intercepts, minus 5 and minus 5. When x is less than minus 2, coming from x plus 2 less than 0, we have x plus 2 minus 3, y equals x minus 1. And the intercepts substituting zeros for x and y respectively. So once again, we've drawn the graphs in light pencil, marked in the axis intercepts. There's the critical value of x, negative 2 to make that 0. The green goes to that side, so this, this graph goes to that side, so it's that part of the graph. And this goes to that side to the left, and it's this part of the graph. Now we're going to use a different method, in fact, shorter. Taking just the a times the absolute value part for now, when a is greater than zero, then we have a positive for a and a positive for the absolute value, meaning positive overall, greater than or equal to zero. And it's equal to zero when x is equal to p. So therefore, this a into x minus p has a minimum value of 0. It's greater than or equal to 0, so it has a minimum value of 0. And it'll have that 0 when a is greater than 0. It has the minimum when a is greater than 0. Now, if I add in the q, add in the q to this, that means we're going to end up with 0 plus q. There we are. So we start there. We add in the q. So we add the q to the 0. And therefore, the minimum value now is q. And it happens when x minus p is 0. Minimum value happens when x minus p is 0, which means that x equals p. So here are two values of the values of x and y, in fact, 
x is p to make that zero. And then when that's the case, y will be q, and that is the minimum value. Conversely, when a is less than zero, that's negative. The a is zero. The absolute value, as usual, is positive. So overall, we have a negative times a positive. That cannot be positive, so it's less than or equal to zero. So the highest value this can take on is zero. So it has a maximum value of zero when a is less than zero. Adding in your q's, there we are, we take that and we add in the q's. Then it has a maximum value of naught plus q, in other words, q. And that happens when x minus p is zero. So, that means these x and y values, p and q, are the coordinates of what we call the vertex point of the graph. Also referred to as the salient point. So we can look at the start and say straight out, oh, p, q, there's the turning point. So we now have it there, vertex point PQ. Notice that the P is changing the sign of whatever we have there. So let's take an example, 2 into X plus 3 minus 5. That wasn't supposed to occur. Sorry about that. It's actually 2 into X plus 1 minus 3. Vertex point minus 1. Change the sign there, minus 3. So there's our vertex point. Y-intercept, we can find the Y-intercept is minus 1. So there we have that so far. Vertex point, so we know that the tip of the V is going to be there. We know that it goes through there. Now, quite simply, the absolute value graph is the straight line absolute value graph of this type is symmetrical about the critical value of x. It's symmetrical about that line x equals minus 1. So we can find another point by symmetry. We can also find it by substitution of an appropriate x value. So when we say appropriate, anything less than negative 1, we can substitute into the graph to find the value. But this is much easier. There we are. There's your critical value, and we've gone to the other side. And there's the other point. And we have our graph. Let's do another one. Hopefully this equation isn't going to change in the next slide. No, oh, yay. All right. I've got it to the form y equals a into x plus p plus q, minus p plus q. There we have it there. Now straight away we can read off our vertex point, our salient point. It's going to be 2, 3. A y-intercept. We substitute 0 for x, and we get 2. So we could already start with the graph there, and we have that part of the graph. Once again, we can find the other point by symmetry or substitution of the appropriate value for x. One of those values would be anything bigger than 2. But in fact, there we are, by symmetry. This far to the left, so therefore that far to the right level. And there is our graph. There are some cases where you're compelled to revert to the definition. If it's not in that form, for example, then you're going to have to go back to definition. Here's an example of that. We have an x outside the absolute value sign. We have to go back to definition. And it all 
focuses around x plus 3 equals 0. So y equals. If x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0, we have status quo. Brackets, but nothing else happens. When x plus 3, the content is less than 0, we change the sign. Notice that's still negative 2x, negative 2x. That has nothing to do with it. When x is greater than or equal to minus 3, there, I've taken just that part, there, then I simplify this, and I get y equals x plus 3 minus 2x, and that means y equals minus x plus 3. And there are the intercepts. Then we go to this side. When x is less than minus 3, then we have y equals minus x minus 3 minus 2x, and we get minus 3x minus 3. They're the intercepts. So there we are. I've marked in the intercepts. And there is the critical value of x equals minus 3, where changes are going to occur. Now there are our two graphs. There are two full graphs there. And we need to determine which part of them is going to be used. So, because this is when x is bigger than minus 3, it's on the right. And because this is x is less than minus 3, it's on the left. <clears throat> so, we're going to have that graph before and that graph after. And there is your graph of y equals absolute value x plus 3 minus 2x. Let's take away the other parts of it so you can see there's the graph. It's better to have those in though, really, because then you're showing you're working. Not those arrows, you don't need those. But I would suggest you have, you keep light pencil lines. I've drawn it in colors just to be able to differentiate between the graphs.